whereas whereas uh, whereas uh, for the uh, scrum that is basically uh, maybe for uh, a small projects or individual projects that might be mm. you know for a span of uh, six months to twelve months maximum. But for the mm -hmm. longer projects, we should go for the safe, safe framework. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Thanks, Sandeep. Yes, I could see some uh, responses in the chat. Uh, being used by organizations for where team size exceeds more than hundred or multiple teams working on same product, mm -hmm. enterprise level framework. Uh -huh. And uh, for managing multiple teams, scaling uh, scrum teams from one to ten, that is ten to one twenty five members. Mm -hmm. Multiple scrum teams roll up to in a scale agile framework or safe. Yes. So uh, when we have safe, I'm sorry, when you have scrum, do we really need to follow safe or any scale framework? What's the gap? What is it we are trying to address? So, By... so the main main gap is basically mm -hmm. uh, collaboration with the you know basically multiple uh, projects at the same time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, we we can manage the small projects that we have good visibility, right? But mm -hmm. where we have the basically you know multiple projects that's become under the program umbrella and uh, mm -hmm. different uh, teams are working from different geography, then definitely mm -hmm. it's very hard to you know manage the project uh, from the scrum framework. So mm -hmm. we need to adopt the uh, safe framework mm -hmm. as a as a scrum of scrum or scrum of scrum of scrum like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we can follow safe or other scale agile teams. So the teams can organize around value with alignment. Yes. Thanks, uh, Richard. Safe includes release lines, program increments, roles and responsibilities, and portfolio management practices. Yes. Scrum is a single team and multiple scrum teams can be used for scaling it for program level. Yes. So all these are valid points, pointers. So let's get started. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, another quick question. Your current role, just for an idea. <clears throat> scrum master. Mm -hmm. Project manager, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. agile coach, or oh. mm -hmm. scrum master, agile coach, RT, agile coach, PMO, mm -hmm. SM, project manager, scrum master. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can connect to this uh, link so that you can ask the questions or you can use it as well. Senior project manager. Mm -hmm. So more or less the scrum master is leading than the project manager overall. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this is about me, a quick intro. So I have 18 plus years of overall IT experience and uh, I'm a safe practice consultant, SPC. So I trained uh, more than 2000 folks on different safe certifications. Again, certification is one part of it, right? So the actual implementation is what the key focus and making sure like we are giving back and helping them like doing these different uh, overview sessions and helping to set the context that is what we do as part of it okay so let's okay you can use this for any q a and you can you can uh, type in the chat window you can unmute and uh, you can raise your hand and we can start discussing as well so let me quickly go to the um, scale agile framework so this is the overall framework, right? So uh, my suggestion, whenever you are starting new with the Scale Agile the first time, whenever you launch it, you might end up uh, landing on this page of portfolio. So never get confused. Don't get worried. My suggestion is to click on this essential, right? So when we click on essential. So this is how the small uh, module is coming up where we talk about that release train level, agile release train level, and the solution where multiple teams are working on one single solution, one common solution. That's what we will start uh, discussing about it. Okay, so uh, just take a quick look at it, this uh, essential and let me know, uh, are you aware of at least five things or five icons on this essential tab.
SPC safe practice consultant uh, who can help with the, who can try and help with the safe implementation. So uh, any of you are not aware of at least five things on this essential tab. We have Agile Teams, Product Owner, Scrum Master, the safe, safe Scrum Kanban, Team Backlog, Story, Enabler, DevOps, including security. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. So uh, my suggestion is to start going through this uh, skillagileframework.com. I can share the link and I will share it in the uh, RT coordinates, Scrum Master and Scrum of Scrums. Yes, uh, Richard, we will go through that. So uh, whenever you are starting with that uh, Scale Agile framework, right? So start exploring this and start from the bottom up. Bottom, uh, for this green uh, ribbon, you might want to skip, ignore, uh, or keep it aside for the initial. So start with the Agile teams. Agile teams, product owner, scrum master, and the team coach, the safe scrum, safe team Kanban, built-in quality. So the beauty of this framework is like each and everything is like an icon. When I say icon, uh, the moment if I click on this scrum master, it will open in the new tab and you will get all the details about this. What is the characteristics of a safe scrum master? And what is the responsibilities of a scrum master? and how you can facilitate the PA planning, how to support the iteration and execution. Iteration is nothing but the sprint. So sprint and iteration are like synonyms. So how you can uh, have the iteration level or sprint level events, backlog refinement, team planning, sync, uh, daily stand-up, review, retrospective. So what does it mean? The team level, we still do the same events or same ceremonies. So now no that we are not uh, no more calling it as a ceremony, so we are calling it as events, right? Even as per the latest scrum, right? So the same events will be there even in the um, same. The scrum master will be still responsible for getting these done. The first thing is supporting the iteration execution or the sprint execution. That is mandate. Okay. Then uh, building high performing teams, improving the flow, improving the agile release train performance. We haven't discussed about agile release train or the PI planning, but yes. Uh, so for each role, the same way when we click on product owner, right? So we will start looking at that product owner uh, responsibility. See the product owner. Connecting with the customer. Yes, obviously, that's what the responsibility of product owner, right? Getting and applying feedback and supporting the team in delivering value, managing and prioritizing team backlog, contributing to the vision and roadmap. Yes, this is a typical responsibility of Scrum Master, sorry, product owner, right? So this page, each page has each and every detail. Go through it. You will have lots of lots of information. So even if you have attended any of the safe certification, you may have not got this much of information uh, directly accessing to the framework. Right? So they, they provided a lot of information. It is up to us how we want to make use of it or we want to uh, get the benefit out of it. Okay. So uh, that is at the team level. So we have the team flow and the agile release train level flow. So we will come to that agile release train now. So what is it the agile release train? five to 12 teams who are working together or who are uh, working on a same solution, same implementation, we need to start bringing them together and we can call them as an agile release train. So how the flow happens is like, uh, as some of you mentioned, we will be having some additional roles at the agile release train. The first one is the RT, release train engineer. So what is the release train engineer? In short, uh, we call release train engineer as a chief scrum master. So what does it mean? He acts as a scrum master at the release train level, which means what is his typical responsibilities? Coach, mentor, release train, 
facilitate release train level events, resolve any impediments or blockers, making sure the release train is progressing. Right. So each and everything, what Scrum Master do at the team level, the release train engineer will be doing at the release train level. Then we have product management. What is a product management? Uh, similar to that of a product owner. So sometimes we might get it out. Why product owner? Why product management? Two different roles. These are, we need to understand that these are roles, not the designations. And some cases, what happens is the group of product owners at the agile release train might come together and play the role of product management. It might not be a separate individual playing the role of product management. But it could be the same product owners all at the release train level. They will come together and they might play the role of product management. So what is the typical responsibilities of product management? Uh, defining the release train level backlog, prioritizing it, and making sure like interacting with the business owners. Business owners is nothing but the investors, stakeholders, who is asking us to implement this solution. They are the ones who take the decisions at the business level. So the product management uh, interacts with the business owners and the product management focus more on the customer centricity design thinking. The scale agile uh, from the version five onwards, they started uh, focusing on this customer centricity. What is it the customer centricity? In the scrum, typically we uh, talk about doing the demo, getting the feedback from the stakeholders. Right? So, the same logic applies for the safe as well. But even before defining the backlog, start having the interaction with your customers. What is it you are looking for? Or what is it the challenges you are going through? Or how can we help you as a program, as a solution? Or what is it we can uh, help you to solve your challenges, problems? That is what the customer centricity is all about. So for that, we will be using different design thinking techniques like uh, personas, customer journey maps, empathy maps, right? and the story mapping, different, different techniques within the design thinking. Let me quickly open that. Uh, this is what the design thinking is. First, understand the problem by discovering and defining and then design the right solution by developing and delivering. Right? So uh, rather than first uh, defining the requirements, implementing it, and then getting the feedback, this is not what we are expecting or the, we are expecting something else or we need uh, something, uh, some other solution. We are starting by understanding the problem by interacting with the customers. And then by taking that as a base, we will be focusing on designing the right solution. Along with that, we need to focus on whether it is a desirable solution, viable or feasible solution, and it should be sustainable as well. So these are all the uh, things focus on the design thinking perspective. And it's not a one-time activity. Every cycle, we will be continuously uh, doing this uh, design thinking activities and we will review the metrics or the feedback and we will adjust the roadmap. So that is what the uh, designing, uh, I mean, that is what making use of this design thinking. And the personas, personas is one of the design thinking approach. So we define a, what do you say, um, a fictional character and making sure like we will dis, uh, list on the pointers and we this persona will become the input to the release train level backlog and the team planning and see the carry the consumer is a consumer the persona which is the fictional character which we define does the ART backlog relate to carry's needs? So we have defined the backlog at the team level and the release train level. We need to cross check. Is the features or is the user stories which you are implementing, are they meeting the carry's expectations? Are, how are we providing value to the carry, both at the release train level and the team level? Do we refer to carry during team planning? It's not at, only at the release train level, at the team level as well. Uh, we need to focus it. And have we considered carry solution context? Obviously, right? So when you are developing a value, so developing a solution and implementing it, what's the use if in case uh, 
that is not helping our customer. That is not helping our end user. Right? Got it? Yes, sir. Are you good? Yes, yes. Yes, Satish. Yes. So uh, the back, as a Scrum Master, that is what our role is. So we need to make sure uh, the product owner, we need to remind the product owner, uh, who is our persona? Who, who is this customer? Uh, what is the challenges of the customer we are trying to address? Or what is the uh, pain points of the customer we are trying to uh, resolve? Is it defined as per our backlog? Have we prioritized our backlog by taking that as a context? We need to remind our product owners or product management, and that is what this is all about. Right? And then the custom, uh, this is a empathy map. And then we will go to the user user experience with the customer journey map. So uh, every solution, right? So we will be, we need to come up with the steps. The, the one of the beauty or the one of the important aspect of this is like focusing on value, delivering the value. And we are talking about multiple uh, teams coming together, working together, right? So what is it uh, here they gave an example of a uh, the young couple and they are uh, this is regarding a home loan banking example they have given right so what is it uh, uh, anyone who will planning to take a loan with a bank right first we will be deciding the options then what is it the goals you would like to achieve and uh, learning about the mortgage or the home loan and calculating the budget and choose what to buy, say, doing the property search, comparing the loans, apply, apply for the loan and get the assessment and then purchase by signing the contract and complete, right? So why this is taken as a consideration? The home loan, it is like minimum 15 to 20 years of, what do you say, a loan. And each and every step, the bank and the customer will be interacting on a regular basis. It's not just one-time interaction. Right, we need to go through and make sure, like each and every step, we need to start identifying how the customers are thinking and feeling, and what is it we as a bank is providing or planning to provide the solution to the customers, and what is the opportunities we have or we need to focus on is what that is how we define the customer journey map. So. Each and every step, right? How is the customer thinking and feeling? The happy, or the neutral, and the sad or uh, uh, not happy moments. So we need to start listing down. So this is what the responsibility of the product management, not as as a scrum master as a or a RTE, right? So this is the responsibility of the product management by having that interaction with the customers. We will be starting listing down all these things, right? So each and every step now. How this is going to help? Uh, so this is what we as a customer, we as a bank is planning to provide or already providing the solution. Now the technology opportunities is what we need to start focusing on that. Right? See here, they mentioned AI-based assessments could improve speed and accuracy. Yes, right now we are performing the assessments for doing that, uh, the credit history and everything. But if in case we bring that AI-based solution, uh, it will speed up the process. Right. So that is what the thing and the purchase biometric authentication of electronic signatures. Yes, so that is a, one of the opportunity we have rather than uh, doing each and every paper signing the contract and doing it right. So like that, we once we start listing down these things, right, we will get the benefit out of it and we will start uh, discussing about it. So what is that? we are trying to do delivering benefits through features. So uh, remember our persona carry. So what is that the benefit the customer is wanting 24 by seven access, ability to receive packages without being at home, packages delivered where I want, even if I change my mind. So what features might deliver these benefits? App for tracking the order status and secure package delivery or ability to designate delivery to a neighbor or rerouting packages in transit. So these are the Typical features which we are planning to implement by considering the what is that the benefits or what is it the uh, 
uh, features or the functionality the carry as a customer is expecting from our side. Right? Are you good till now? Any questions? No, sir. This good. Very good, sir. Very good. Yes. So, uh, so this is what we are calling it as like features and benefits matrix. So, it's not just defining the features. We are adding the benefit hypothesis for that uh, customer perspective as well. So, everything, every step we are doing it, even before coming into the implementation, we are focusing on defining, understanding what is it the customer is expecting, and how we can get the how we can define the backlog, how we can prioritize the backlog, how we can deliver more value to the customer, the end user. That is what the focus at the release train or at the solution level. Okay. Are you good? And then the next thing is about the story maps. Story maps, you might have already heard or aware about it. So what is it? So the feature, so we will be listing on all the activities or the tasks for that solution and what is it the minimum viable product or what is it the, the stories required for the initial release? We may be having a, uh, hundreds of stories in the backlog. Do we prioritize and implement everything? No. First step is like we will identify what is it it is required for the initial release from end-to-end -end perspective. Then what is it the improvements in the next features or the next future releases is what we will start focusing and we will start uh, prioritizing them from the team level and the release time level and we will start focusing on. So that will become the input, the prioritized input to the team backlog. So as a scrum master, our role is to remind the product owner, hey, have we, I know uh, you have prioritized it. So have we considered our customer and user the priorities on the solution, what we are trying to targeting to address? or what you are targeting to uh, implement from the end user perspective. Have we considered that? Just as a reminder, we can ask or we can remind the product owners whenever we go to the backlog refinement or for the sprint plan. Okay, we are good with the design thinking and the customer centricity. Yes. Okay, then comes the lean UX user experience. So as we have focused on, <laughs> excuse me, as you have focused on prioritizing the uh, uh, backlog, the same is the case we will be doing the lean user experience. You won't be uh, bringing up or defining the entire user experience. Instead, we will be prioritizing it. What is it required for this upcoming release or upcoming planning interval or upcoming PI, upcoming uh, sprint? Accordingly, we will define that user experience and we will pass it as an input to the release train level backlog. Right. So we started discussing about that release train level. So how we define the backlog by going through the customer centricity design thinking by making use of the lean user experience, we will be defining the backlog. And here we have the weighted shortest job first as a prioritization technique, recommended prioritization technique from the scale agile perspective. What is it the WCF? Yes, Satish. Sorry, Satish, to stop you in between. I just have a sure. question here. Like there is a call like uh, Agile release train backlog and how mm -hmm. it is like different from the normal backlog from the scrum point of view. Uh, is it the same or anything uh, anything added to this? Uh, kind More of... or less, yes. More or less it is the same, but uh, the team backlogs will be different and this is like a sort of a product backlog. So we are talking about multiple teams coming together, working together, right? So the Agile release and backlog is nothing but like the uh, product level backlog. And uh, we will be talking about the features here, not the user stories. So we will be defining and, and practicing the features at the release train level backlog. Sure, Satish. You mean to say that it's a, a, can be called as an epic also, right? Epic level. Yes, yes, okay. epics. Okay, thank uh, you. The features, yes. Uh, hi, Sadi. So this this particular thing that we can say that from art backlog, it is going to the team backlog, right? Yes. Yes. The art backlog is first we define and prioritize. That will become input to the team backlog. That's correct. Yeah, and, and there will be multiple teams. Right? Obviously, They're multiple all... teams. So the teams will start picking up what is that from the features which we planned and prioritized at the uh, PA level. 
what is it we have to implement in the upcoming uh, release or in the upcoming PI. That is what the teams will start picking up from the ART backlog. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Satish, one question I have actually. Yes, sir. The Agile release team has all the development teams, right? And all the supporting yes. teams as well. Yes. So those will help us in the development. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> this art backlog has all those user stories as well, right? So those are the supporting ones. Uh, art backlog will be having the features. Okay. Not the user stories, right? The right, features. features, those supporting features as well. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. Okay. This uh, we will we have yet to talk about the system team supporting teams, but those backlog or those priorities also will be defined in the IIT level backlog. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Sure. Uh, are you good to know? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, uh, IIT backlog is like product backlog in Scrum. Yes, okay. That's correct. It's a product backlog which will become input to the team backlog, team level backlogs. Right? Now, once, uh, let me go to the WCF. So, weighted shortage job first. Uh, this itself will take a lot of time to discuss about it, but uh, I'll just give a quick uh, overview of it. So, what is that we, we focus on as part of the WCF is like, see, typically, the team level, how we, what is the prioritization techniques we use? Moscow, Cano, or different uh, techniques we use for the, uh, what do you say, at the team level prioritization, right? So one of the recommended approach of the scale agile is like WSGF. So what is it? The WSGF is like weighted shortage job first. So how it is going to help is like, we will be considering the cost of delay versus the job duration. What is the cost of delay? What is the user business value we are going to achieve by implementing this? Uh, what is the time criticality of implementing this feature? What is the risk reduction and or opportunity enablement for this uh, implementing this feature? So we will be having a consideration of these parameters. Again, when we say B, it is the responsibility of product managers to and the architects to take care of this. Uh, the release train engineer will facilitate this conversation of having the uh, prioritization at the release train level because it is at the release train level. So as a scrum master, we might not even involved. We might not even be informed about this, how or when they are doing that prioritization at the release train level. But this is how they will be considering and this is how they will be doing the prioritization at the release train level backlog. Yes, Pawan. Yes, Satish. Uh, I understand this so that this is at the project manager level, but uh, for the job size, uh, mm -hmm. just just curious. Like the team should be uh, someone from the team should be able to provide that uh, very close answer. How uh, how much time will it take? Is it uh, is it right? I'm thinking. Yes, yes, to some extent, yes. But uh, that's the reason we will be involved in the architects and. See, this is just for the calculating the WGF. That might not be the actual uh, job size or actual uh, estimate. So somehow, some cases, what we will do is like, we might be taking that features to the team, even before this prioritization, when the feature is defined, right? So we will be doing the estimates from the team level. That will become the input for this job size. Correct. Thank you. Right. So this is this won't be done in one single session, one single discussion. First, we need to define the features. Right. So when we define the feature, uh, along with the benefit hypothesis and the uh, non-functional requirements, acceptance criteria, everything, the team might be involved in that, and the team might be doing a high-level estimate. See, uh, obviously, it is a prior, uh, high-level estimate at the feature level. Right. They will be doing the high-level estimate, and along with the architect. The system architect is what we will be taking that job size. And some cases, what we'll do is like if you're not sure, if you're not clear about this job size, we will just consider only the cost of delay. Because uh, the estimates, we know it is an open discussion any point of time, whether we do the Fibonacci series, t shirt sizing, or anything, right? So, how correct the estimates are? What is the guarantee that the estimates we are doing is correct? 
we are not sure. No need to worry too much about that correctness or accuracy of that uh, estimates. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Is it the outcome of the story mapping, Vijay? Yes, to some extent. Uh, not just the story mapping. It is the outcome of the customer journey mapping and the personas, the empathy maps, all these will be considered. And that's when we will be uh, taking, uh, passing that as an input for this prioritization. Yes. Uh, Gokul? Uh, yes. So as I said, like, so this involvement will be the product manager, architect, and the SMEs will be involved in this estimation, right? For this. Uh, yes. yes. That's oh, correct. Yes. Okay. 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 Fine. Fine. And the future mode. Yeah. Thank you. And the release train engineer will be facilitating this conversation. Okay. 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 Fine. okay. Yeah. Yeah. See how it will be like, uh, again, just a small example, like single sign on, what is the business value? What's the time criticality? What's the risk reduction? What is the cost of delay total together? And what's the job size? The WGF is what, uh, so now what is it? Uh, the mobile app, the total score is seven. So that will be the first feature which we will prioritize. Then comes the single sign on, then come the moving to cloud. So these are just, they gave the three features. We might be having uh, maybe uh, tens or twenties of features. So for all the features, we will be going through that and we will be prioritizing it. Okay. Good. And that will become the prioritization. And once we define the backlog, that will become the input for this agile release train. And what is it the Agile Release Train is doing? They will be focusing on this continuous delivery pipeline, continuous exploration, integration, deployment, and the release on demand. Uh, yes, Malik Ajna, sorted by highest value. Uh, is RT similar to SOSM in uh, Scrum at scale? SOSM, uh, Vijay, can you elaborate what is it SOSM? Scrum of Scrum? Uh, scrum of Scrum, sort of, yes. RT is a chief Scrum master. He will drive, facilitate the all the events, discussions uh, uh, at the release train level. Yes, sort of. Chief Scrum master. We call them as chief Scrum master. That's correct, yes. Yes, Satish. Uh, sorry, Sadish, once again, uh, in the previous example, like with, when we were uh, uh, giving about that uh, bit, bit short job first, uh, so we found that that highest, uh, the, the mobile app, we got that highest uh, estimation points and that we mm -hmm. planned to take it first, later yes. uh, based on that. But in, in mm -hmm. some such, uh, some of those other scenarios, like there are some dependencies, wherein mm -hmm. uh, and completeness, to check the completeness, until unless all the three, uh, suppose say the mobile app or single sign on move cloud, there are dependency. So feature wise, mm -hmm. if, if one has to see the completeness, so a mm -hmm. uh, few things has to be done at the, three stages level, uh, three uh, three uh, departments, uh, suppose. Mm. In that scenario, mm -hmm. how can we take up this uh, kind of uh, estimations? So that will be considered in the time criticality. Right. Okay. So uh, uh, when we say uh, like uh, moving to cloud is to be prioritized first because of the dependency with something else, yes, this will reflect in the time criticality. Okay. Right. And uh, when we say these three features, so let's suppose these are the three features, uh, there are different ways. Uh, some cases, if it is a feature team, one team will be for working on mobile app, one team will be working on single sign-on, one team will be working on moving to cloud, which means all the three might be happening in parallel for the implementation. Yes, correct. Yeah. Right? So, sure, yes, sure. so that uh, dependencies will be considered in the time criticality. Hey, yes, without getting this done, can we implement mobile app? Yeah. Or is there any guidelines coming from uh, any government or any customer perspective? Like, uh, for example, like Zira, right? So Zira now Atlassian announced that uh, starting from February 2024, they won't be providing any support to the server version. So yes, that is a uh, input for the time critical day. Do we have to move to cloud or move to the uh, before even considering continuing the implementation, right? So 
yes i'm just giving an example right so some cases that time critical will be coming from the government perspective or the customer and user perspective okay. sure sir this got it thank you yes then what uh, the continuous delivery pipeline uh, will be coming up the exploration integration and deployment and the release on demand so what is it the continuous exploration we defined the backlog we prioritized it and we started working on it but we may have to do some exploration even before implementation that is where the continuous exploration starts coming up how to implement or what uh, we know now we know what to implement the next step is like how to implement what is the different alternatives, different options, different uh, solutions or the different uh, versions of the software or whatever that we are using it. How to achieve that? We will be doing that continuous exploration, then the continuous integration. And here we are talking about the agile release trend, which means 10 to 12 teams working on it. So the key important aspect of one of it is a continuous integration. The integration, and as you can see here, the continuous exploration, integration, and deployment, which means sprint one, sprint two, sprint three, sprint four, sprint five. So every sprint, we need to focus on the continuous integration. It's not like towards complete end of the uh, PI, we will be integrating everything together. Then what's the difference between waterfall way of working and this uh, agile way of working, right? So uh, it's not like a sequential, we need to make sure exploration integration and deployment is happening and every sprint level that is what the uh, reason they why they represented here in this way at each and every sprint as well right. so when you say planning interval of the pia of five to six sprints never focus on doing that integration in the last sprint no because there is one of the reason why we moved from this waterfall traditional way of working to the agile way of working during the last moment, integration is when we typically identify a lot of challenges or the integration issues. So if you are doing the same mistake again in the name of Agile, what's the benefit? What's the use of moving into Agile itself? Okay. And the deployment also, if possible, can be happening on the regular sprint level. No need to wait until the end of the PI. We can do the deployment. When you say deployment, the deployment to production and making sure we make it available to the end users. The release on demand can be happening multiple times throughout the PI. Which means when we go for a planning interval discussion, the PI planning, we will be doing a discussing about this as well. How many releases we are targeting in this four to six sprints. So what is that the priority for the first release? What is it the priority for the second release? What is the dependencies for the to achieving this uh, release on the timelines? How we need to make sure we are getting the support of the uh, dependent teams or the supporting teams, how we can get that integration implementation achieved. Okay, we are good till now. I have yes. a question here. Yes, Vijay. So this is regarding, um, I mean, you're saying that continuous exploration, integration, and deployment needs to happen at the same time, right? Not at mm -hmm. the component level, basically everything together, right? So if yes. there is a situation where exactly we are not able to complete it in a sprint, mm -hmm. then it moves to the mm -hmm. other sprint, right? I mean, it goes back to the backlog and, and again. Yes. Back, right? All those things. Yes, yes. Into it's the same. But, it's the same thing. But mm, yeah, go ahead. If, if, if. The team feels that they, they are not able to achieve in that particular time frame what should be done in that case so that is where having the uh, scrum of scrum discussion including the scrum masters along with rt and having the po sync so one main difference between the uh, typical scrum versus this uh, safe implementation is like along with the scrum of scrum we will focus on the product owner sync as well so what does that mean all the product owners of the release train teams will start coming together and we'll discuss, hey, this is what we planned during the PA planning. This is what we assumed, or this is what we thought we will be achieving by sprint one, by sprint two, by sprint three. But once the team started exploring, once the team started realizing uh, the challenges, the issues started coming up. So what is it the scope we want to revise or reprioritize? So the product owners will start discussing among themselves and that input will be passed on to the teams. 
that reprioritization happens on a continuous basis, not just at the uh, PI planning level. Throughout the sprint wise as well, we will be refining, revising, and reprioritizing the backlog continuously and making sure now that we are done with sprint two, we are going for the sprint three planning. Right. So, right. what is it that we plan? We thought at the PI planning to achieve by sprint end of sprint two. Have we achieved that? Might not be because of some challenges or issues. So, obviously, the scope might get refined and reprioritized. So, what are we okay to go ahead and continue with the plan, or do you want to reprioritize and do you want to uh, adjust anything? Basically, inspect and uh, adapt. Obviously, that will be continuously happening. Continuously happening, and and <laughs> and and as part of it itself, you are saying that I mean, we, we there is a possibility to split that as well. Yes. 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 Yeah. We can. We can do that. And there is a question uh, from Navin. If you are planning multiple releases within PA, what is the purpose of having a time box duration as PI? So, Navin, what happens? Right. Typically, the first time when we start implementing the save or the agile way of working, the organizations might be doing a uh, quarterly, excuse, quarterly release. Like most, uh, so my experience, how it happened, right? So the organization, the clients for whom I supported as an SPC, as an RTA, so what happened? They were there in the six months release. So initial, I'm telling about the initial context when we started this safe implementation the first time. So we are focusing on doing that six months release. So PI1 and PI2 together used to be contributing to that first release. Then PI3 and PI4 to the second release. So slowly, steadily, as we start bringing up this automation, this continuous integration and the continuous deployment, everything, we started reducing the release timelines. From six months, we came down to three months. From three months, we came down to the monthly release. So what is that we are targeting to achieve on uh, month one? Uh, or release one and the release two and release three. So we might be doing the demo. We might be doing the integration. We might be getting the feedback of that release happening. And so what happens is as part of that uh, time boxing, we will make sure to do that as a release time. We will be focusing on doing that inspect and adapt at the re uh, release train level. And we will be starting to focusing on improving for the upcoming releases or upcoming PIs. What's the objective of hardening sprint? There is no hardening sprint as per the uh, safe, but here we have this IP iteration. So what is it IP iteration? Uh, IP innovation and planning is not a hardening sprint. We need to understand that, right? So what is it we do as part of this? Let me show. So this is how the sample IP iteration calendar looks like. See, a two week sprint uh, considering that Monday to Friday, so the buffer for the any workflow work or any skills development or learning, cross training, knowledge sharing, and preparation for the PA planning, innovations and hackathons, and the PA planning readiness and inspect and at the release train level, and then the PA planning day one, day two, and if it is a distributed uh, release train, we might be doing the day three of the PA planning. So this is what ideally we do at the IP iteration. So IP innovation and planning iteration is not a hardening sprint. No. No, that's not the intention. That's the reason we are continuously mentioning that the continuous integration, we should be doing at each and every sprint level itself. No need to wait until that IP iteration. IP is not a hardening sprint. Right? So that's a major issue which many teams start facing. Yes, Nami. Yeah, so yes. this actually, when we are having multiple teams and mm -hmm. their, their, their dedication and focus are on the team, team backlog, for mm -hmm. each sprint. Yes. So are there different separate team who is actually focusing on continuous integration and continuous deployment in only one sprint or how it is being done? Because team members of a particular sprint team cannot work on uh, integration and deployment, right? Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. is going to be different team. If there is a separate DevOps team is taking care of the integration and de deployment or how it is being done in the same sprint time duration. Yes. See, uh, when we say continuous integration, the four activities is what happened, developing and building and testing end to end. So when you say testing, the testing is not just for done at the story level. Instead, see, this is not the, uh, what, what you say, like uh, from the no, first no, no. PI, thing, we might thing, not. One thing, one thing, one thing, Satish. Integration, yes. what I am understanding is 
we are integrating in we are integrating the the work done by the together is that correct that's correct yes yeah so i am not taking i am not saying the integration of the team members of the one single sprint team scrum team i am saying integration of work done by the multiple teams together is that happening yes. in a sprint, each sprint yes that is what is the expectation that is what is the ideal scenario see when we say test end to end and the build and test end to end the focus is to make sure all the teams code base is integrated and the testing is happening at the end to end level right see this won't happen from the first pi we need to understand that so it might take some time we need to make sure the automation is there the deployment how frequent the code is getting deployed and uh, made available for the teams so for us for one of the release train what happened is it took four pis to get stabilized and streamlined and achieve this end to end integration within the sprint within on a regular basis so initially it used to be like weekly basis then we started doing daily basis then we started doing three times a day the code used to get integrated when you say code integrated it's not one team one story no all the teams of the release train entire code used to get integrated and whenever the uh, application is available we can integrate we can validate everything not just one team user stories as code so, so i want to know what is what is the role of devops team what is the role of devops team what they do if the and, devops team is the one and, helps and one helps and one, one one more thing De hmm. what is devops team and whatever integration and deployment who is doing it is the sprint team member of each team who is actually assigned to focus on this activity of performing integration and deployment mm -hmm. it is a continuous activity it's not like one no, time i am not asking continuous activity or not i am asking who are the people who is working on that work which is as we are terming as continuous integration and continuous deployment because mm -hmm. these people cannot be from the sprint sprint team members right so who no, are they no. they are they are the sprint team members yeah. they are the team members they are the so, team members we have the we, we are mm -hmm. not we are not assigning any user story for integration work and deployment work in the capacity planning when we do the capacity planning we are not writing any team objective team uh, backlog uh, i believe uh, there will be a system team right uh, am i right so who system they team will, yes yeah mm -hmm. so yes. they will you know take this piece of work from the city team and they will integrate that and they will they, they will arrive a plan for the deployment you know right on the basis of this uh, the continuous deployment and the basis of the you know customer uh, demands we will release that. is that correct or that's correct sabri yes see navin uh, when we say the team is doing the continuous integration all these activities are is considered within their sprint capacity it is not yeah, a separate I, activity but i but i have never seen any activity mentioned at continuous integration and continuous deployment in any of the team backlog so far it is not a separate that's what i'm telling it is not a separate backlog item when we say user story the expectation is the user story should be developed Built, tested, end to end, and we need to be keeping it ready with the continuous integration with the other teams, entire end to end code base. There is an expectation. So when we say the team is doing the estimation, they will be considering all these activities and they will be doing the estimation accordingly. But you if, have for if not, you have not mentioned deployment. You have not mentioned deployment. Deployment. How it can be done? Deployment in in the if we out of ten user story, we have only. Mm -hmm. completed only three user story how we can deploy mm -hmm. it before the end last day no need to wait until last day that's what my point is see if we are waiting until the last day that is what the waterfall way of working even within the two weeks sprint no need to wait until the last day if three user stories are completed let's suppose day 3 of the sprint first one user story is completed it is already integrated it should be already integrated with that code base and it should be made available for all the teams it's not just for the one team that see it it needs lot of time and effort to get that uh, established only then uh, the teams will be able to achieve it 
Yeah, but yeah, we yeah. do not, we do not, do not deploy in the middle of the sprint. Anything we no, don't deploy no. in Why? the middle of the sprint. Why? No. Why do we not deploy? What is the challenge? Naveen, What is the meaning of Scrum? What is the meaning of sprint time box? Because we do not release interminently in the middle of the sprint, correct? No, no. Time no, box. no, no we, we do, we do, we do. We do. No, no, we do. No, I mean, every no, every no. developer working on any of the piece of code at the end of the day, his job is to check in that particular code and before going home. And so tomorrow, when the next day, the when the deployment happens, so all other team who are working and all other piece of code which are getting deployed on that particular environment, any issues can be found intermittently, even the testing team is not testing that piece of code. So in, in other words, this continuous integration and uh, deployment is nothing but your development is doing the check-in piece at the end of his particular task finish. So he's check, checking, Jafar, checking, checking in the code is not equivalent to deployment. Deployment. No, 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 no. We, we, we will be doing it uh, as well, Navi. Yeah. See, it, that is what again, it, it, is, it is getting, it is getting diverted. Uh, the topic but that is what the ci cd pipeline is all about so if you're not doing the deployment on a regular basis we are doing a waterfall that's what my perspective simple uh, if you're waiting until end of the sprint to do that integration if you're waiting until end of the pi for doing that integration that is nothing but doing the waterfall in the name of agile and that is the main what reason meaning, what is why what is the meaning of sprint time box then what is the meaning of sprint time box it is not sprint time, time box, box sprint. sprint time box is to make sure how much the team can achieve within that given two weeks timeline that need not be until the last day of the sprint what if we integrated 10 user stories in the last day of the sprint what if the application was broke do we have anything See, to even showcase as a deployment feedback deployment do you say the deployment is release? Release and deployment is same thing? Both are different. Release is different. Deployment is different. Uh, I have one question. Can I? Yes. Yes, sure. Uh, so, uh, as your statement, we will be able to deploy at any time, right? In between mm -hmm. the iterate. If that mm -hmm. is so... You know, without showing demo, right? The system mm -hmm. demo and the integrated mm -hmm. demo, how can we mm -hmm. integrate that code into the deployment pipeline so that, you know, it won't affect, uh, you know, how can we ensure that, you know, that demo is not happening then without demo and the set in the UAT sign off, how can we go with the deployment? That's uh, Okay, that's I have a suggestion here. If you are referring that we are deploying directly into production, then that is not the case. Internal yes. environment we are doing. That is where CI/CD coming into the picture. Any of the environment okay. which is available throughout your sprint, it could be your dev, it could be your SIT, it could be any of the ad hoc. Okay. There we it are doing the non prod, right? Yeah, yes. non prod. We are doing it, and there we are checking. Okay, fine. I got it. I got it. So, so yeah. basically, what they are saying is you are making it production ready. Production ready. That's correct. And. The release on demand will start bringing up. See why we are doing this continuous integration and deployment. Any point of time, if the product manager or product owner want to deploy something to the production, we can do it immediately. There is a reason why this continuous integration and deployment is focused. And the release on demand, we have we used to do for a banking client, the release used to happen on an intermittent basis. We used to have a scheduled releases, but sometimes based upon the feedback or the request coming up from the customers, stakeholders, we used to deploy whatever is completed until that point of time. We used to do the demo and the UAT is also part of the every sprint. UAT team also used to work together along with us because we are having that integrated code base. They used to give the sign off and making sure we deploy it to the customers, to the production, any point of time. There's a main reason why the focus on the ci cd and the release on demand is coming into context Ajay, yes sir. Is, we, we have it safe transformation and mm -hmm. we do not have any team with the name of system team we never had any name with the system team number one number two mm -hmm. i want to understand the devops team responsibility what the devops do and how the agile devops. is responsible for facilitating devops devops team is the one who focus on helping the environment ready whether it is a dev environment, SIT or UAT or pre-prod, prod, there is a responsibility of the DevOps team. They will make sure 
they are bringing that application or the environments up and running. And the DevOps team is the one who focus on doing that integration as well and making sure the environment is ready for the uh, testing and the validations. Yes, Google. Uh, hi, Satish. I have a clarification. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, so here we are saying multiple teams working together. Say, for example, I am mm -hmm. working a web application. The other team is working mm -hmm. on API application. Okay. At the end mm -hmm. of the sprint. Okay. We are integrating the code. So is it like, uh, I mean, the same uh, sprint uh, demo uh, will be, I mean, showing the demo, right? At the end of the sprint, right? Though we have mm -hmm. uh, four uh, sprint iteration plus one IP iteration. We need not mm -hmm. wait at the end of the PA, right? So even no need. integrating the code, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So whatever is integrated until uh, that part of the sprint, we will do that uh, demo. We will get the feedback and we will go ahead with the next sprint. Oh, so it, will it be like a collective team uh, thing or like at the yes. individual? Say for example, if I'm web application, I'm just showcasing that or how is that? Uh, it, it, it used to be collective uh, Google. Okay. Okay. Fine, fine. Right. So, uh, what we used to do again, see, it is about uh, based uh, the way we do the implementation, right? So, not every safe implementation is same. We need to understand that the way how we have differences at the Scrum level. Same is the case with the safe level as well, right? So, not every organization, not every implementation is same. So, safe is trying to provide some guidelines, which we need to make use of it. Yes, Pranjali. Yeah, uh, the scenario, I'll, I'll not take much of your time. The scenario you have sure. given, right, about the API mm -hmm. and the web application. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that that depends on your sprint goal, uh, whoever was mm -hmm. asking the question. Like, let's say if you have given a goal, like we will be showcasing complete integration end-to-end -end for that specific feature, then definitely you have to go. But yes. then you told that, no, integration is not possible in the screen. Uh, in the sprint, we will be only developing the code. So whatever we will be showcasing, we will be going through the mock data. If your client is okay with that, then you can go ahead with that. Like separately, you can do with a different system. But yes, if you have given a goal, like we will be doing that integration completely, then definitely you have to go that. Yes, that depends on the sprint goal, what are we yeah. are defining at the sprint level. Yes. And yeah, usually sometimes... we also have you know those kind of scenarios where we have given the mock data sprint go uh, i mean review and all so mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. yes. i just wanted to share sure Thank thanks you. thanks Ranjali. yeah mohammed Hi, Sharish. Uh, actually, we have two set of teams. This one is the development team, another one is DevOps team. So you are saying about that the CI, CD will be taking care of the DevOps, uh, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, mostly for the deployment cases, right? So we have Azure pipelines. So uh, there was a challenge. Uh, one of our engineer is asking why, uh, uh, why we have to depend on the DevOps team to do, do the deployment. Why can't we do it ourselves itself? So in that mm -hmm. case, uh, what is the right solution and approach? So uh, what's the benefit of having a separate DevOps team is like they will be making sure all the code base is integrated and uh, getting the application, the environment ready for the next version or the next uh, next uh, integration. That is what that typically they will take. So there are a lot of steps which involve uh, bringing up a new environment, right? With the, by taking the current baseline versus bringing up the new environment so that we can integrate the code base and we can make it available. If your uh, team itself is capable of taking care of that continuous integration without the support of or help of DevOps, you can go ahead and make sure you can work with that. Only thing is like, what if the application was down or what if some integration issues come? Can we capable mm -hmm. of uh, handling such issues? Right. So the DevOps okay. team in that case integration and making sure they will do some sanity checks and make sure that application is up and running. In that case, we can do pre-prod environment for that uh, by the capability team and then for production, we can move, uh, give access for the DevOps team. Correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. And uh, Hitesh, this is not a document. It is the uh, direct uh, framework, the URL. Well, we are not using any document. The direct uh, URL, you can start using it, accessing it. And as I am opening it, right, you click on it. It will open the new tab with that uh, content. Okay. Are you good? Okay. Let's continue. Uh, 
So the next thing is like, uh, yes, we haven't discussed about the PI planning. So let's quickly discuss about that. And uh, the IP attrition we discussed, touch base a little bit. Let's talk about the PI planning. So what is the PI planning? The way how we typically do a scrum level or a sprint level team planning, same is the case. We do the PI planning at the release time level. So what happens? Ideally, we will be bringing up. So what is the input for the PI planning? The business context and the roadmap and the vision and highest priority features what we defined as part of the ART backlog using the WCF for the what are the prioritization technique we use, right? So that is the input for the PA plan. What's the output? The committed PA objectives and the release time level planning both. Let's quickly take a look at it. And uh, I guess someone asked in the group, what is the preparation required for PA planning? So uh, the majority of the cases, the facilitation will happen at the RTA because it is a release time level event all the preparation required for the PA planning might be taken care by the RTE. Some cases, the scrum masters at the team level will be taking care for the feature level uh, estimates, feature level things, right? So what is the, who is the attendees? The business owner, product management, the teams, system and solution architects and the system team and all the other stakeholders, they will be uh, part of that uh, PA planning. So what is it? The input, the organizational readiness, the content readiness and the logistics readiness. So. Uh, it is all self-explanatory on the page, so I'm not going in detail. So we can start going through it. What's the planning scope and context? Have we defined the planning process? Do we need? Do we know which teams need to plan together? Not every time, not every team might be required. So be, uh, we, as we identified that release time, we might uh, invite some additional teams as well, especially when we have the dependencies. We need to know which teams we want to plan together. And do we have the uh, business alignment from the... Um, business owners, do we have the agile teams defined and do we have the dedicated teams and the content readiness and the logistics readiness, everything will be, uh, it's a self-explanatory in this uh, page. You can take a look at it. Okay. And uh, this is the typical agenda of day one and day two. And uh, because of the COVID or even before the COVID, we used to do the distributed PI planning. What is the distributed PI planning? Our teams are located in five different time, time zones. So when you say five different time zones, we won't be able to do the entire planning within two days. So we may have to split into three days or four days, the PI planning. So make sure uh, to go through, go through this distributed PI planning as well. And here they have given the time zone one, time zone two in the agenda. And this is just acting as a reference, right? So we can take a look at this. You will get an idea of what is it the PI planning is. Okay. So what happens in the business context? The business owners, the stakeholders or the investors, they will be coming and setting the context to the release train. What is it we achieved till now? What is our target? Or what is it we are planning to achieve in the next coming PI? Then the product vision and solution vision. When you say product vision, solution vision, by taking the business context, what is the features we define and what is the uh, prioritization? What is the vision we are targeting to achieve? That will be defined by the product management. Then the architecture vision and the development practices. Because uh, we are having multiple teams working together, uh, the architecture vision in the development practices is where we define. Let me quickly go through it. Yes. Here, they will be discussing about the development practices and the DevOps, the continuous integration, continuous deployment. And this is where we will be defining or we'll be discussing how frequent we want to integrate the code or how frequent we want to do the system demos. Who can help with that integration or the implementation? That is what we will be discussing the architecture region in the development practices. Then the planning context, the release train engineer sets the planning context and uh, what is the expected outcome of the planning. Then uh, till here, the first four sessions is a common for entire release train. When you say entire release train, let's suppose we have 12 teams in the release train. All the 12 teams will be in a common meeting, common session like this. And the team breakouts is where the teams will start doing their individual breakout session. So three hours is what they mentioned. It could be three to four hours based upon how much planning was already done and how much uh, the input is already given to the team. So what happens in the team records? This is where our role as a scrum master also will start coming up. So we need to start coordinating with your respective team. 
product owners, uh, the team. And during these team breakouts is where we will start uh, preparing this planning board. Okay, so team uh, team names and the sprint one, two, three, four, five, and we'll be creating a planning board like this. Mm -hmm. There are different online tools. Earlier it used to be in person. Now it is all virtual. So there are different online tools who can help with this PI planning and execution and inspector at all the process. So I will share the links of that. You can go through. Although most of them are licensed version. So it is up to the organization which tool they want to make use of. Simple, they can even create a confluence page and they can start creating this type of boards at the team level as well as the uh, release train level. So this is where the user experience team, the system architect or any dependent teams will start uh, reflecting or representing the dependencies and the coordination required. Okay, so uh, so here what's happening in the sprint three is when we are planning to do one release. So we are not waiting until the end of the PI. So within the sprint three, we are planning to do one release and in the early PI two, we are planning to do the another release. So what is it happening is like, so for this, uh, release, we need to make sure this code base, this feature is completed. For this feature to complete, we have a dependency with this team. For this to get completed, we have dependency with this team. So this is indirectly reflecting or representing the coordination required across the teams. How the team should come together, how the team should uh, uh, work together to make sure they are uh, focusing on achieving that release successful. Uh, any questions on this planning board? No, we are good. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Uh, like, you know, we are already given iteration one, iteration two, iteration three. So, uh, like, let's say if our product backlog is also ready and that we are planning in that some program level increment, but then we'll be needing some more time to break down those product backlog into the features or a story, right? And how mm -hmm. can we manage this iteration? How much time it will go for sprint one, sprint two, sprint three and all? So uh, the team breakouts is where the teams will start doing the high level user stories, not in detail, the high level user stories. Right. So uh, by this time, we know the what is the features as a team we will be working on as per the priority. So the team will start splitting that uh, high level feature into the high level user stories and they will start planning. Okay, for the sprint one, this is the user story, sprint two, these are the user stories. And they will be quickly coming up with that high level estimates as well. See, the main intention of doing this team breakouts is to identify the dependencies in the coordination required across the teams. Okay, but those will be tentative, right? not uh, real yes, time. Yes, the tentative, yeah. obviously, obviously. So as we go to the sprint planning, before that, we will be refining, we will be uh, revising or uh, updating or making sure that is defined as per that acceptance criteria or all the required inputs for that each and every user story. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. And then once that uh, team records is done, so during the team records, what one more thing will happen is uh, the, here the example they have given three hours right so what does it mean within the three to four hours the rt will be calling out the scrum of scrum during the planning during the planning itself so what does it mean uh, the uh, the rt will invite all the scrum masters and asking how is the planning going on have you identified the dependencies do you need any support from any of the stakeholders or do you need any clarity for any of your features? Or uh, have you got all the required inputs from your dependent teams? How is the commitment is going on? So that, that quick five, 10 minute uh, scrum of scrum will be happening during the team records. So it is like uh, every 45 minutes or every one hour, the scrum master will be going to that uh, scrum of scrum during the planning, during the planning itself and making sure uh, like uh, they are providing the required inputs and they will be, what do you say? Uh, updating this program board, planning board as well. Okay, so this is one of the interview question asked in one of the interview, like uh, w w w when is that you as a scrum master will be taking part in the scrum of scrum? It's not just uh, for every sprint. During the PI planning as well, we will be taking part in the scrum of scrum. So you need to add on top of it sharing the 
every sprint we will be defining the scrum of scrum and i as a scrum master will be taking part in that by providing the inputs or any challenges or any dependencies with the other teams everything along with that during the pi planning as well during the team records our rt will facilitate the scrum of scrum and to make sure we are uh, doing that planning on time or the planning is happening on a uh, timely basis and we as a teams are identifying the dependencies any coordination required with the other teams good yes then comes the draft plan review where uh, here uh, yes mohammad hey, sorry satish actually uh, in our organization we used to call like a qbr so quarterly commitment uh, where we do a uh, masco things everything and uh, uh, for the next three months of alignment of the features which we are going to work is it the same thing it is like pi planning or it is completely different more or less quarterly yes quarterly backlog refinement uh, some cases they will call it as qbr or quarterly planning or big room planning yes we are doing it well, but the main difference is like here we are involving the each and every team as well see the qbr the team might not be involved Mm, yes. Okay. Right. So Thank you. Here we are involving the teams and we are making the teams identify the dependencies. Teams come and showcase their draft plans, and team is the one who will be giving the commitment. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Then comes the draft plan review. Uh, one hour is what the typical timeline they mentioned, right? See, we have 12 teams, for example, which means each team might get half, hardly five minutes of time. So the team need not go through each and every sprint or each and every iteration level. Instead, they will quickly give a high level update of what is it the plan, what is it they are targeting to achieve, and what's the uh, support they need to get that achievement done. So there is what, or any blockers challenges, that is what they will be discussing in the draft plan review. By taking that as an input, the management review and problem solving is happening. So, yes, sir, sir, please, because yes, when no. when when the draft plan is getting created before the PI, it will be common one for all the team, all the ART teams, or how it is. Big. During the team records is when the teams will start creating their team level plans, and we are talking oh. about the team level plan. Each team will come and publish their level their team plan. Uh, during so the team records is review. when the teams will create. So draft plan review is something which is going to be one to one for each team. Yes, that's correct. So in 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 one hour, each team will come and they will represent their five minutes duration for their own plan for this their teams. Yes, this is at the release train level, and we will be talking at the feature level. We don't do at the team level or the sprint level or user story level. Right. So. The main intention of doing this draft plan review is like to pass on any inputs to the management team. We, we identified this is the scope. We identified these are the priorities, what we want to achieve. But as a team, can they implement it? Can they achieve it? Or do they have any challenges? Do they need any dependencies? Or do they need, need any, do they have any blockers? By taking that as an input, the management review and problem solving, we might reprioritize the scope. Let me quickly go to that. See, uh, draft plan, they present the challenges like scope, people or resource constraints or any dependencies because of which the management team may negotiate scope changes or they might do any planning adjustment. So let's suppose we plan 15 features for the PI, but because of the dependencies of the challenges, the team started identifying, we might refinance it. Uh, rather than 15, let's go with the 12 features or let's go with the reduced scope for this PI and let's take it to the next step. So that is what the management review and problem solving will be happening by taking the input from the draft plan review. So when, when, how the solution train is related to ART and what is the different differentiation in profile of solution train engineer or then to uh, RTE? We will, uh, we will discuss it later, Namin. First, let's complete this and we will discuss that. Yeah. So this is what the uh, typical day one agenda uh, and then the day two agenda, the planning adjustment. So what are the adjustments is happening as part of this management review will be passed on as a planning adjustments. And that will be passed on to all the teams. And then again, by taking that new scope or new 
inputs or suggestions from the management team, the teams will again continue their breakouts. And once that is done, they will publish their final plans and they will get the uh, approval or they will get the commitment from the business team, stakeholders sharing it. Okay, yes, this is what uh, based upon the priorities, based upon the scope, based upon the uh, input suggestion, this is what we have defined, this is what we are targeting to you. During the final plan review, the business team will be giving the approval that yes, we can go ahead with this plan. And then the release train level risk, some risk will be at the team level, but measure of the risk uh, could be uh, some team, some risk could be at the release train level. So what is it the release train level risk? How do we handle it? Who can help us with that achieving that risk or resolving that risk? That is what I will be discussing at the release train level risk. So what is that the release train level risk? happens is we will typically call it as a room resolve we identified it as a risk but it is already addressed so no need to worry about it won't so someone within the release train is owning that risk but it cannot be addressed during the planning it will be addressed sometime during the execution so planning we tried but it is not at result it is still at to open risk but someone at the release train level is taking that ownership mitigated is like what if that cloud migration is not happening? Do we have server or do we have a database or do we have any other alternative plan? So teams will come up with any alternative plan is what the mitigated risk. Accepted risk is like sometimes um, whatever we do, we might not be able to achieve it. So that will be defined as an accepted risk. So uh, an example of that uh, COVID vaccine, right? So. Uh, I was talking to one of my friend who is working for that uh, Dr. Reddy. So they mentioned that hey, before even starting working on that COVID vaccine, they started asking the management or the leadership team, what if after spending this much of uh, the team bandwidth, budget and everything, what if the vaccine which we identify will not be meeting the government guidelines or will not be getting the approval from government? Are we okay with that? Or who is taking that more accountability or ownership? Right. So that is an accepted risk. We know what if it might not be uh, getting that approval or what if it is government is saying that, no, we can't release this or we don't want to give it to the uh, end users, customers. There is an accepted risk. So we are trying to highlight it during the planning itself. What if this risk comes? Are we okay to take the chance? without doing any blame game. That is what this accepted and the mitigated risk is all about. Okay, good. Uh, so this is the risk uh, documented at each uh, team level, right? Yeah. Uh, level. yeah. Yes, if it is a team level, team might be able to take care, but this is a release train level, solution level. Right. So we are telling that, hey, want to achieve this, but as a release train, as a solution level, we have this risk. Are you okay with that? So this risk is at the solution, I mean, the release train level. Okay. Okay. Then the confidence vote. So this is how in person we used to do that confidence vote. Now it is all digital tools, like anonymous tools, like uh, Miro, Mural, or even the AHA slides which we are using, uh, all those things we can use. Or even the Zoom has that uh, whole voting, right? So we can, by using that uh, confidence vote, we will get to know the planning is done, but how comfortable, how confident are we to achieve this? So we will get that confidence vote at the team level as the entire release train level, and we'll get that commitment from the entire release train. When it's the entire release train, it is not just the teams, the stakeholders, the business owners, the architects, the system team, the product management, the product owners, scrum masters, the teams, everyone is involved in that. Everyone is giving a commitment to that plan. Then once it is done, a typical retrospective for the planning, how the two days, three days PI planning went, what went well, what didn't, or what we can do better for the next PI planning or any format, any template. We just, they gave us some sample reference, right? So then the next step, what's the next steps? cleaning the rooms uh, i mean if it is in person but uh, entering the team objectives at the tools or reviewing the team and the release train level calendars and making sure the look uh, the timings of the scrum of scrum or the team sync 
how frequent we want to do it, uh, how regularly we want to do it, and the PO sync, everything will be defined, everything will be discussed. And we'll be taking it up. Okay, are you good? Okay, yes. So this we discussed at the one single solution level, one single release time level. So Navin's question is a large solution. So let me quickly bring a picture. Um, when we say a large solution, what does that mean? Uh, multiple release trends working together is what the large solution. Um, you are able to see the screen? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. So Boeing is one of the uh, companies where they are making use of the scale agile framework and they are making use for the large solution. So what is a large solution? For building this one Boeing aircraft, here they have given the part name and the company and the country located as well. See the wing tips, the wing, central fuel, uh, wing to body pairing, tail fin, like each and every part, they are collaborating with the different companies and different countries as well. So what does it mean? This is a one solution, one large solution. Right? So uh, like that, so what's happening is here we will be having multiple release trains working on that one common solution. Here the solution is the aircraft. It is a physical product. We know that, right? So uh, the difference between the online software versus a physical product, we know the difference. So we can't release to the production as soon as a sprint is done or as soon as a uh, PI is done. So this building that one single aircraft itself will take a couple of years to get that, the R&D and making sure they are integrating, making sure they are uh, bringing it together and uh, working together. That is what the large solution is all about. Okay. So what does it mean? Yes. So when we say the large solution, uh, we have the solution intent defined, but the, uh, there will be a lot of variable scope in the beginning. Variable scope in the sense, we know we want to achieve it, but we don't know how to achieve it. So that is where, uh, for each PI, we might be doing some modeling or we might be implementing some features. End of the PI, we will check on how we are doing it. And again, we might be doing some simulations. And again, it will be keep on as we go into the PI to PI, the fixed scope will be increased and the variable scope will be reduced. Yes, Dalia, we will be passing on the recording. So that is what we will be, uh, that is what the large solution. So uh, Tesla is one of the example of a large solution. I'm not saying that they will, they're making use of safe, but to implement one single solution itself, it might take a couple of years to get that one single solution. So another example, which I typically mention is like a Hyderabad Metro. Right? So when they define this uh, Metro, or is from Hyderabad, you can correlate it. Right? So, they defined it, see, the stage for Begambe to Shilparamam and Nagul to Shilparamam. So, but once they started implementing the Shilparamam, they realized that it is not feasible. So they changed the plan and they made sure it is ending now at the Rai Durk. So this is the one solution, large solution, which might take even years together to implement and to achieve it. And the main intention of this large solution is, uh, let me go back uh, to the framework. The, the main, uh, main challenge is the large solution is like the suppliers, third parties, vendors. Both the examples which you discussed, uh, Hyderabad Metro, uh, Boeing, right? So we know that we are having different uh, vendors, different suppliers, who is working on that solution. Forget about safe and scram. We don't even know whether they are following waterfall or even any process or not. We can't, because we are following safe or we are following scrum and agile, we can't force our suppliers or our third party vendors to uh, follow, uh, follow the scrum, safe and all those things, right? So that is where the, the key responsibility of the solution train engineer will start coming up, coordinating with these suppliers. They are progressing on a timely basis making sure they are ready to integrate 
with the core base what already is and uh, they are taking part in that planning and implementation that is what the uh, thing from the large solution the main difference between it and multiple release lines will be working on that implementation and this is for one single solution are you good navin yeah yeah so actually if we are in essentials there is no need to use solution train uh, no need no. okay many many of our implementations might go with the solution i mean essential itself very rare hardly uh, 5 to 8% across the world is where they are making use of the last solution the complex uh, implementation like the way which we did just now and uh, satish can you just uh, speak in two two yeah. sentences what is value stream hmm. yes sure let me go to the portfolio and we will discuss are you good till now the essential and last solution yes okay so the main intention of how we start how we define the release trains that comes from the operational value stream and the development value stream as a scrum master or as a project manager or as even as an rte we might not be even involved in those discussions but let me quickly give a overview of what is it the value stream so what is the value stream is like how the flow of value is happening from the time we receive a trigger or we receive a request from the customer till the time we deliver value we we deploy the code or we make it available to the customer and how we make use of it there is a uh, thing is simple example of a value stream so what happens we will start expanding what's the step 1 what's the step 2 step 3 step 4 and what is the system who will help with achieving that no steps no uh, hitesh um, so what think... is there any is there any unit for value stream is there any unit for value stream no no there is not there is not a unit as such it is a what is it we achieve how we are delivering value to the customer and user that is what the value stream is all about you see here they gave the example like uh, the loan uh, system the car manufacturing the software product and the some uh, uh, auditing purpose so they are giving different examples like what is the attracting customer then giving a quick quote then completing the application then uh, taking a decision then extending the loan then giving the loan setting up the payment terms repay the money and closing the loan so this is a end to end step end to end value of one consumer loan or a home loan or any any loan as such so this is the va one value stream so what happens for that we will start uh, so this is nothing but the customer journey map which we defined which we discussed earlier right so for that we will start discussing how we want to achieve the value how we can deliver the value how we can improve the solution which we are providing right then once that operational value stream is defined the development value stream will start coming up development value stream is where we are involved this is where the release trains will start coming up so <laughs> what is it the thing for the loan example they have given so for these four steps attracting customer quick rate code completing the loan application eligibility so we identified for achieving this we are providing different channels to the customer we are taking care of the loan originating system module and we are taking care of the credit scoring system so these are the three modules which will help to achieve these steps in the value stream then the loan awarding loan payment terms repay money closing loan is all the core banking so the first three uh, what do you say the modules are might be handled by one release train and the core banking might be handled by another release train so there is how like the value streams will start coming up okay so once that release train is identified that's when we as an rt or we as a scrum master might get in on oh, okay yes yours is a core banking release train yours is a loan originating release train so we may not be even involved in these discussions or in these uh, value stream identification but we need to be aware of which value stream our release train belongs to and what is the end to end value stream where we are providing value to the customers to the end users okay are you good
to uh, just to reiterate everything is there in the scale agile framework it is a open source no need to depend on anyone just open it as i mentioned go through the essential start exploring one by one first again recommendation is to start doing with the team level uh, scrum kanban the team backlog then start exploring the english train level things so that way it will become easy for you to understand and correlate the context or the concepts okay so no need to worry about the last solution or portfolio at this point of time start exploring the essential if you have any questions again we can discuss further or we can have another session like this and we can go through the questions as well are you good so this i have one question yes okay uh the last question like normally that odd sync call that is happening right it's a combination of that scrum of scrum plus uh po sync or like uh, po sync uh if both happens then no need of that odd sync call right uh, i mean scrum of scrum and uh, this thing happens right yeah, uh, yeah. art sync art sync is a combination of the both the events scrum of scrum and po sync some cases we will be doing it separate some cases we might be doing clubbing together as uh, one single event itself so because uh, we will be involving both the scrum masters and product owners so that like we can discuss then and there and we can go ahead and wrap it up right so it is up to the release train how we want to have it whether to have it as a separate events or we want to have it as a one single event okay if they want to combine then we can have as a yes, we can, we can combine because, yeah because uh, during the po sync we will discuss about the scope changes or any adjustments or any blockers thing uh, as a scrum master we also might be providing some inputs or suggestions right so we might uh, start uh, doing that and we might be uh, providing the inputs as a scrum master as well so having both scrum master and product owner together and having that one single art sync that can help at times okay fine so yeah thank you okay so that's a quick overview it takes years not hours years to understand or go through each and every thing of the safe framework but yes just uh, gave a quick overview how to get started how to start understanding it start playing around start going through it we can discuss further as well okay yes uh yeah just before wrapping it up uh i'm part of ss agile gurus community uh we, we will be we started doing the buddy mentoring program for q1 30 folks registered and we are planning to bring it up uh, multiple things as well so the upcoming virtual events these are all uh, uh, we will share the details so lean coffee connect where we start discussing about the any day to day questions or any challenges or anything which you want to discuss the safe mentoring we are planning to start from q2 so what's the safe mentoring it has nothing to do with the certifications if required yes we can do the certifications as well but until unless it is really required no need to go for the certification instead you can start exploring understanding it and make sure you understand the concept so what is it as part of safe mentoring we are planning to do is like do the hands on activities of that defining the features using the wgf doing the pi planning and doing the other activities as well at the uh, release train level so that you will get more hands on or more clarity about how you can showcase yourself as a safe scrum master or a safe rt then uh, the scrum hand kanban hands on simulation as well we are planning uh, no, not yet finalized it could be between q2 and q3 yeah i guess um, the safe hands on once the uh, safe mentoring is done we will be continuing it we will be doing that the safe hands on as well that is about this and in person uh, we don't have anything right now but yes the overall feedback yes any feedback before we wrap up we will share the recording with all the registered participants I will share the URLs and we have few WhatsApp groups. If in case you are interested, you can take part in that groups as well. So all these groups are like uh, uh, just to uh, have the agile discussions. We have a tool specific group as well, like uh, Zira and Azure DevOps. So we can have the conversations and we did a lot of uh, open sessions for the Zira and the tools as well. I will share all the links in the email so that you can go through that videos as well. Okay. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Sutish, it was a wonderful session, believe me. Like for me personally, I just uh, like very impressed by the knowledge you have, frankly speaking. So yeah, mm -hmm. definitely Thanks. it's by work that you have achieved, but yes, it's a wonderful knowledge that you have. 
ஒர்க்ஸ்ஃபுல்லியோ simple uh, essential safe they implemented it and they showcased it as a success story in the scale agile website i'm trying to look at that i will share that so uh, the main intention is like just try to bring up the teams who can work together or who has lot of dependencies and coordination among themselves so there is uh, there are still many organizations who are still following scrum itself yes if there is helpful they can follow that but by having these different roles or different events or the different discussions uh, even including the dependencies or the scope changes reprioritization readjustments that can help the implementation as such altogether there is a main reason why the organizations follow the safe as one of the framework like that there are multiple frameworks like large scale scrum scrum at scale right? so there are different scaling frameworks which they are uh, available at the uh, enterprise level thanks okay. thanks thanks everyone so 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 do we do we have anything like execution i mean like in scrum at scale we have it as like executive action team and things like that right so do, mm-hmm. what what do we have in here mm-hmm. uh yeah uh, can you come again vijay no uh, we have something like executive action team right about mm-hmm. um, in 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 scrum at in scrum at scale right so what yes. do we have in yes yes yeah we have a lean portfolio management at the okay. scale agile where they talk about the organization level vision the lean budgeting all right so okay. uh, when we say the portfolio what happens is like uh, amazon or google or microsoft as an example right so as an organization they have multiple solutions right so right. The, when we say the portfolio right so we'll talk about multiple solutions so for achieving that multiple solutions we might define different kpis and Uh, because we have multiple solutions we need to focus on how much budget should be uh, assigned or prioritized for uh, amazon shopping cart versus amazon web services versus amazon movies amazon music what not so uh, and that is where the multiple value streams and multiple solutions will start coming up and that is what happens at the portfolio level right so okay. and, and netflix are... yeah go mm-hmm. ahead and they are responsible for the vision of exactly yeah the organization level vision as an organization yeah. as amazon we want to achieve 10% improvement in the revenue for example by 2025 right. so right. that is, vision will be input for the release trends or the solutions in okay 10% improvement in the revenue amazon shopping cart how much we can achieve amazon web services so much we can achieve amazon movies amazon music amazon prime right? like that each solution will start splitting or taking that part and they will start defining by taking that as an input the organizational level vision they will start defining the uh, their priorities and their features in the implementation okay and and in safe um, let's take an example um, uh, the scale agile team or or what you call it um, art right basically mm-hmm. they are not able to resolve the impediments so where exactly mm-hmm. goes rt the first point of contact is rt okay. so uh, the way how we have a sync between the scrum masters and the product owners the rt is also will be having the sync and the rt has direct interaction with the business owners business owners is nothing but the the investors or the stakeholders the customer who is driving the solution implementation right so you as an rt directly go to the business owner saying hey we want to uh, integrate to this cloud but the cloud vendor is not responding or cloud vendor is not uh, meeting the timelines can you follow up and can you get it done okay so the investor obviously right so when they have that influence they will get the work done okay right. so there are two two things right when you talk about investors right one is end user 
and second one is the organizational level right mm. right end user might not be end user might not be right so yes. the business owner is the one who is getting that investment or who is getting that funding who is getting that approval for that initiative that is what we call them as a business owners the end user might be involved but we might not be actually go and follow ask the end user hey we want to implement this can you follow up with the vendor and get it done what will the end user do right when it, when i say end user right i mean to say let's take an example an organization is that right the huh. people that end the organization the... yes they will be they will be the business owners here right okay let's suppose we are working for icic bank for example right so the icic bank investors or the uh, who are is taking that lead will be the right. business owners obviously they have that influence they have the power to uh, follow up or to escalate or to get the things done got it. okay thank you okay right. yes this okay. was this was really an important informative session. Thanks a lot for that. Sure, sure. Thanks, thanks, Vijay. Thanks. I I need to thank each of you to make it an interactive session. It's not like one way communication. So thanks for that. And yes, yeah. If you can rate scale of one to five, just take quick. <laughs> I will stop sharing so that you'll be able to influence <laughs> with the ratings. And uh, one small uh, point. Uh, once we are done, you might get a, uh, what do you say, the testimonial, you can provide the testimonial to the top mate. That's the reason we are uh, posting it on the top mate. Just provide your feedback on the test, uh, top mate as well. Okay, we crossed uh, 18 minutes already. Thanks everyone for taking your time. On the the last, last thing, right? So yes, if you have yes, any questions, is there any way we can reach out to you? Yes, you can. You can. You know my number. I shared my LinkedIn as well. Yeah. You can reach out to me any point of time. That would really help. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm I'm still part of the group, so you can reach out to me one on one as well. And sure. uh, we will uh, I will share the WhatsApp group links in the email tomorrow morning along with the recording. So you can take part in that and we will start uh, publishing uh, uh, the upcoming events as well in the groups. Okay, miss. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Satish. Have a good time. Thanks. Thank you, Satish. Thank you, Satish. Thank you, Satish. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you very much. Very informative. Thanks, Kiran. Really Thank you so much, Satish. Helpful. Yeah, it's uh, really informative. Yeah. And uh, last thing, if you can share the case study as you mentioned, right, for essential or something like that you were mentioning. Huh, I'm about... trying to locate that. I will share that. I will share that. Once I get it, I will share that link. Sure, sure. Thanks. Thank you. Sure. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. I thought.